to go to make it. The clock is in sight. It's Salazar and Beardsley and Beardsley's closing. And I'm running. It's amazing nothing for Los Angeles. They're going for the win. They're going for the win. Not far to go down. Down trying to go back. What a great incredible athletic performance. 30 seconds left for one record performance. The Foot Locker Road Race of the Month is brought to you by Foot Locker, where it all begins. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Revis, along with Lynn Williams, as we begin the 1992 season on the Foot Locker Road Race of the Month at the Miami Marathon. Why Miami? Well, Lynn, every Olympian going to Barcelona began somewhere like the Miami Marathon, a small event where the emphasis isn't on gold, silver, or bronze. It's about something as simple as fun. Tony, you're right. The competitive spirit at every level is the same, and that's why there's so much camaraderie in the sport. When I first started running, sure, I may have had that Olympic dream, but that wasn't why I ran. I ran because I enjoyed it, it made me feel good, and it just felt good to push myself, and that was what motivated me throughout my career, and I know it was the same for most athletes. Today, we use the Miami Marathon as a backdrop to review 1991 and also preview the 92 season. Number seven on the inside, that's Florida's Mary Level Menton, the early race leader today. The conditions are perfect here in Miami, and she's going off at a very comfortable pace. 52 degrees, 86% humidity, no wind. These people got lucky today. Susie Knees is her competition early on. We'll see how that develops. The big race in January will be the Olympic trials for women in Houston. One of the favorites has to be the woman in pink, Kim Jones, second to the Boston Marathon this year, a former second placer at the New York City Marathon. Doesn't win, but runs beautifully from behind in major marathons. Always consistent, certainly a pre-trials favorite. She looked very strong here at the Philadelphia Half Marathon this year. Kathy O'Brien, young phenom. She, we haven't seen much of her this year. She actually won the LA Marathon, but then took a break from the roads, which I think will help her. She went to Europe for the track circuit. I think the, the break from the, from the roads will allow her to be really focused in this up and coming trials. And of course, she did make the Olympic team back in 1988 as well, even at a very young age. Lisa Weidenbach, fourth the last two Olympic trials. She's definitely the big story. Last time we saw her at the Barrios Invitational in November, a bone stir was holding her back, but already in this year of 92, she's won a half marathon convincingly. She's looking good. Leslie Lehane, now she's a bit of a sleeper in that she did take a break with childbirth for a while. They're taking her time coming back, but she's the one with the speed and the track background, and she won Crim this year as well as the San Francisco Marathon. So other than Francie LaRue Smith, she will have the speed and a good, strong finish. As opposed to the American men, some of the top women perform in the world are Americans. What a trials in January in Houston coming up. The Miami Marathon began like the Honolulu Marathon last month in the middle of the night, 6 a.m. Perfect. 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 Yes. I mean, that's obviously what's going on out there. Perfect running conditions and uh, with a little bit of high humidity, but with such little wind and a crisp air, we're freezing oh. on the press truck. Surprisingly, we are, but for a marathon, and especially these first-timers, they're thrilled with the conditions today. Here's our leader at 10 miles now. That's Victor Miranda, the defending champion, ran 233 last year, a Panamanian national who's been living the last couple of years in Miami. Well, what kind of day we got out there to run? Sort of talk about what the, uh, I mean, you got a perfect day. I, I feel the humidity, <laughs> but it's nice. It's nicer than Wisconsin to run from. There's a lady who loves to run. Susie Knees has packed in five marathons this year. Her best one was in Memphis, a 2.47, which was only two minutes off the qualifying time to make the women's U.S. Olympic trials. Now here's a lady who chooses her races. Liz McColgan has come back after childbirth. Her daughter Ailish was born last year. She came back incredibly determined and had one heck of a year. Her versatility is so obvious. Look at this, the fastest debut ever in the New York City Marathon all the way to the World Championships 10,000 meter gold medal. And here she is smashing my record at the Carlsbad 5000 last year. Actually, early in the year, later in Chicago, she ran faster, but on an uncertified course. Uncertified, the point is, this lady doesn't have a bad distance, and she certainly is on target for the Olympic 10,000 meters. More from the Miami Marathon after this. Welcome back to the Miami Marathon. Tony Revis along with Lynn Williams. The Flamingos moving around to keep warm in this cool early winter day in southern Florida. 
Bad for Flamingos, good for runners. Victor Miranda, our leader and defending champion, all alone going up one over the, the only hills on the course, the overpasses over the highway. But he's looking good. Looking very strong. He runs about 120 miles a week training-wise, and he's on target to try to qualify for his own Panamanian Olympic team. He needs a 2.22 uh, finishing time, I believe. Now, the foreign, dominant, foreign presence on the American road racing circuit began really with the Europeans. Now we're seeing the South American athletes come onto the scene. Brazilian Delmer de Santos taking the measure of Ecuadorian Rolando Vera here at one of the great races in the world, the San Blas Half Marathon. If every race in the United States was like this, road racing would not uh, at all be in the position it is right now. But de Santos we saw later in the year at Revco running in the marathon, but down in Puerto Rico, the Brazilian presence led by Valdenor de Santos and this man, Delmer de Santos, is really starting to emerge. The Mexican presence has been good for about five or six years, led this year by Salvador Garcia, here getting himself ready for a victory at the New York City Marathon in Youngstown, Ohio. He also earlier in the year won the Long Beach Marathon, will be one of the top, I would say, five marathoners well, in the world in the Olympic year. Has run sub 210 this year. And here are a list of our top five fastest marathons of 1991. Not a very fast year, but that sometimes happens in the pre-Olympic year, as everyone is a little bit more guarded in how they go out and try to test themselves. The African presence on the World Road Racing Tour continues to be impressive. Paul Kipkowicz, Chala Kaleli, they are sandwiching Arturo Barrios, who they later dropped, and they're chasing uh, another Ethiopian, Addis Abibi, who had probably the most dominant performance on the road racing tour this year with his victory here at the Borobudur Run, scaring once again the world record and the half million dollar bonus that goes along with it. Very hot, very humid conditions, and this young man blistered a very fast sub-28 minute time for the second year in a row. And doesn't look like he was all that exhausted by the effort. Looking pretty easy. That was that was really impressive. Later in the year, we caught up with Paul Kipkowicz from Kenya, the 1987 world champion at 10,000 meters in his first serious marathon, heading toward the skyline of Cleveland, Ohio, and scaring that course record by just four seconds, missing it out by four seconds, but showing that he is a marathoner to be contended with later in his career. Two of the most prominent Kenyan runners on the American road racing circuit, that's Steve Kogo on the inside, going on to victory in Fal here at Falmouth, and in third place, William Musioki, both of these two had a number of victories on the circuit. The beauty of Oahu's diamond head always signals the development of new African talent beginning in the mid-1980s with Ibrahim Hussein. And then with number one back there, Simon Robert Nali, a two-time Honolulu Marathon champion. But a new crop came to the islands this year, led by number eight, Benson Masha, just a 21-year-old. But he took the Honolulu victory, uh, his first major marathon victory, and in his first marathon attempt of the year. So very much like uh, Paul Kipkowicz in that regard. Here's a look at the top major race victories for Africans. Ibrahim Hussein, a second-time winner at Boston. You know, in his own quiet way, he's put together a great series of races. It'll be interesting to see what he comes up with for the Olympics. Just as there's a track and marathon component in the Olympic Games, so too we have this layering in Miami as well as yesterday, the grassroots of the sport began to take seat as kids age seven and up ran one mile on the track at Tropical Park. Hold your horses there, young fella. And they're off in this one-mile race. Tony, it looks more to me like they're running a sprint 100 meters than a mile. Well, they got to get that inside Whoa. position. Oh, my gosh. That is real track racing. These kids oh, are taking this seriously. A little excitement. This is the grassroots. This is the spirit of running. Look at that. Look at that competitive spirit out look there. Look at the pace they're running. They're going after Seb Coe's or Steve Crane's no world kidding. record. America's future Olympians right there. Well, notwithstanding his uh, uh, suicidal pace, Lynn, I like his form. Tony, he's got great form. He knows, he looks to know what he's doing. Arms and legs moving in sync. I would bet he's had a bit of coaching. He might have. You know, we talked to Patty Cohen. She's a special ed teacher at South Miami Heights Elementary. She's got 55 kids in today's races. Uh, a mile is a long run for them. They're not used to the mile run, but... Uh, they get through it. They all we emphasize finishing. That's it. Whether you have to walk at the finish or run through the finish, we emphasize finishing. They like it. It's fun. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money. You just need to have a little bit of parental support, which we have out here today. It's wonderful. Parents are getting up and getting their children out here and taking them somewhere and letting them do something that's fun. And we'll be back to the roads in Miami right after this. Welcome back to the Foot Locker Road Race of the Month in Miami, where the excitement is just devastatingly high. That's Chaka Castro leading the wheelchair division. He's from Brazil. He's there looking very strong, good form, 
all on his own. He's a strong young man, but uh, he's not as powerful. He's still very young and hasn't really developed his uh, full upper body strength, but he's got excellent form, and he's got one of those new aerodynamic chairs with the long wheelbase up front. The big boys, they met numbers of times on the Footlocker Road Race of the Month. No more exciting than at the Tom Sullivan 10K in March, which was their national road championships. There's Jim Kanab, who was the defender from 1990, living up the block in Long Beach. This is sort of a, his hometown race. He's won it five or six times. Next to him, number four in the blue, right behind him now, Craig Blanchett, the 89 champion. Craig Blanchett, he had a heck of a year back in 1989. He was out for blood in this in this wheelchair championship. He wanted to regain his former form and uh, show who, where, where he should be at. There is in the red, Kenny Carnes from uh, Maryland. He was the Honolulu Marathon champion in 90. Behind him, Bill Duff, Doug Kennedy in the uh, white it's outfit. All the, who's who all the in studs. American it, it really wheeling, is. that's for sure. It's much more like bicycle racing than road racing, but they began their presence with road racing, and they've maintained that marriage with the roads, and I think both sides are glad of it. A, a welcomed presence. It's a, it's a change from the running, and it, it's added an awful lot of excitement. And here's a look at Craig Blanchett's power and form and why he really did come back and dominate in 1991 like he had two years prior. And as I said, we, talk, we spoke to him just prior to this competition. Here with that 89 national champion last year had sort of an off year and everyone's talking Kennedy Kanab. Kennedy Kanab, what do you think your chances of playing the spoiler are today? Um, well, I, I'm in good shape this year and uh, I don't think I'll be embarrassed like I was last year. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best and, and I'm in definitely better shape than I was last year as was his chair. You can see the difference. The technology is growing in leaps and bounds. Disc wheels, longer wheelbase, better steady roll. Craig Blanchett himself was in much better form. He apparently lost about 10 pounds. He was he was ready for this race. And look at how easily, his sprint is just the best in the business. There's just no one who can stay with him when he's on form. And Very on decisive. form he was, on form he was at the Tom Sullivan 10K. Enjoying the crowd. Gene Driscoll in the lead in the yellow chair and Cody Morris right behind both products of the University of Illinois in Champaign. Been training partners for years. This year they moved away from one another, but their competition stayed as spirited and close as their friendship has over the years. Back in Miami, Brazil's Chaka Castro all on his own easily wins this marathon in just over two hours. Now it's time for this month's Power Bar Road Report. Fuel for optimum performance to New York Central Park for the Race for the Cure, one of a series of 5Ks run around the country, staged to raise dollars and awareness for breast cancer. We spoke with the founder of the series, Nancy Brinker of Dallas. This race is intended to be a grassroots event. It's intended to bring all ages of women and families to the, to the race sites uh, so that more education can be done and a realization that breast cancer is a disease that affects everyone. The first race for the year was run in Dallas in 1982. As a matter of fact, 1991 was the first year where they said, let's create a series out of this. 16 cities joined the tour. This year of 92, 20 to 25 will be added in. Last year in New York City, 2,300 competitors making it the biggest first time running event in the history of New York City. Race for the Cure. The focus of this month's Power Bar Road Report, Fuel for Optimum Performance. Back to Miami, defending champion Victor Miranda looking smooth and strong and continuing to lead. He is on course record pace, but cameraman Rich Jane is back checking out our women's leader. What really, what really motivates you? Uh, I like to run and I, I've seen a lot of improvement. I, uh, I think we do it for self-enjoyment and uh, I would do it, I think I'd run anyway, even if I wasn't competitive. And uh, I have a 22 month old daughter, and uh, since her birth I've dropped a lot of time on my running. And so I'll try it for a couple more years, and if I keep improving, I'll keep going. But you just do it because you like it. And the, your, your goals, meeting your goals and your objectives is a, it's satisfying. What do, you, what do you feel like, you know, here in America? I mean, you, you get a little, um, I mean, over in Japan, marathons are huge. And in uh, Europe, road racing gets a lot more respect. Yeah. They turn out, you know, I mean, people come out to support them and everything. Yeah. I kind of wish you had a little bit more of that here. Yeah, probably financially. I think those of us who are on my speed, uh, you know, when you're not making a few dollars, it's tough. But and you don't really think about that either. Just think about improving. It's hard. 
I'm sure it's hard for a lot of the track runners that don't have big sponsors. But, yeah, they're probably doing it for the same reason I am, because they like it. I can't speak for anybody else, really. <laughs> <laughs> This is time for Miami. Feeling good. We'll push it. I feel like around 24 miles. Second place. You gonna catch this guy? No. I know. <laughs> oh yeah. He might get hit by a car. Well, so. Tom, what a wonderful center. <laughs> but right now, let's go to our etonic injury prevention tip of the month shot. with Dr. Podiatry Amal Saxena. Often, when runners want to improve, they incorporate speed work. This can place undue stress on the body. A typical area to get irritated is the ligament on the bottom of your foot known as plantar fascia. The plantar fascia can get irritated, feel bruised, typically is more painful in the morning. What you can do to treat it is reduce your activity, use proper shoes, take an ice cup to roll and massage the bottom of your foot. Using common sense when trying to increase your intensity is real important. Hey, I know that guy. That's Paul Williams from Canada. He's actually... Paul who? Yes. He's on target for Houston Marathon and using this half marathon in Miami as a tune-up for that race. He's looking pretty on form, I would say. 104.34, I believe his time was, so he really looks good. Here is a look at our top American marathon performers of 1991. Nothing lower than a 2.12.06 by Ken Martin, but all these men so tightly bunched will be in Columbus next April 11th for the Olympic Marathon trial. Among the favorites in the competition, here we see in the black outfit, Steve Spence, who was a winner at the Jacksonville River Run in 91, but most importantly, the bronze medalist at the World Championships in Tokyo in the marathon, the first medal at international level by an American since shorter silver at Montreal. And Tony, that was 15 years ago. This is Ed Eyestone. Now he's you know, a sure contender, but he had a bad Boston Marathon this year, has come back, was third in Sapporo, and in fact has won five big races this year. The man next to him in yellow short and appeared Mark Latches. He's on a day-to-day -day whether or not he'll be an American to run the trials. If he does, at 210, he's the fastest American if indeed he's considered American. The other guy, Bill Reifsneider, who's leading on the inside in the dark glasses, he won the Columbus Marathon just last November, and that's where the course will be run for the Olympic trials. So he may have an arm up or a leg up, maybe both of those, come Columbus and the Olympic trials time. Can't forget about Kenny Martin moving up on the inside there alongside Ed Eystone. He was a winner at the Big 7 Miler this year, but more impressively was sixth in Berlin and a 212. There's he a lot of men very closely bunched together on the American scene. There's no longer the 209, the 210 men, although Kenny ran that 209 back in New York City 1990. And our Foot Locker scoreboard shows the last five Columbus champions, and with Rice Snyder, Spence, and Platches, that could easily be our Olympic team. Not too good. No? Went out a little too fast. Had the flu. <laughs> what pace did you take it out at? About 6.55. What are you doing now? About eight and a half. <laughs> what? Well, that's... Have I'm you paying many, the price. Have you run many marathons before? It's my second one. What do you think you... I was going to try to break uh, three. Kind of as a learning experience, eh? Yep, you ain't kidding. Oh well. How'd you do it? Chalk it up to experience. Bruce Gettleman speaks for a lot of marathoners. When they come to their second marathon, they expect so much more. The first one, they just try to finish. The second one, they tend to want to go for broke, and they usually destroy themselves in the process. These pictures indicate that the number of racers in 1991 not affected by the recession in the economy as the sport of running continued to find people jammed in like a beehive, especially races like Beta Breakers with 110,000 people. Running shoe sales this past year went up by over $100 million from the previous year, which was also a record year. The number of marathon participants went up another two or 3,000 over a previous 1990 record year as well. So running continues to be in fine health and probably can expect even a boost in the Olympic year. America's up and comers after this. Welcome back to our year in preview show here on the Foot Locker Road Race of the Month, coming your way from the Metro Dade Miami Marathon. 
Some people go about their paces a little bit more slowly and casually. The up-and-comers on the American seed this year, including the big man in front, Jeff Jacobs from Roscoe, Illinois, 27 years old, formerly known as really Illinois' best runner. Jeff in 91 moved up another notch on the competitive ladder. A consistent top finisher in major events like fourth here at the Falmouth Road Race. His biggest win, the Park Forest 10-miler in his home state. Young John Shear, the tall kid on the inside here at Revco. Now you can see by his race credentials this year, he's had somewhat of an up and down year. The ups though have been really high. And the big thing with John is that his concentration has been in at the University of Michigan. He's working on a combination master's PhD degree in aerospace in engineering. Watch out when he has a chance to really focus on running. For the second year in a row at the Metro Day Miami Marathon, Victor Miranda sets a course record, 230-39 unofficially. And Miranda did this without any competition whatsoever. Other races this year, Tony, we saw produce some decidedly closer finishes. Here's the bar here at the Barrios 10K. That's Ed Eyestone and Geraldo Alcala battling out what appears to be for first place. Alcala making a move here. Ed Eyestone trying to match him, coming, coming up on the inside, fighting for that first place. But look out, here comes William Musioki wondering where he was going to find this kind of speed and he just passes by these guys as though they're walking and they are not walking looking over his shoulder it was an easy victory one of the great sprints in all of 1991 a great move at the end of race that's peter, peter mccolga number 59 wife of liz and evaporating out of the picture frank o'mara from ireland the world indoor 3000 meter champion he ran so fast our camera couldn't catch him look at that fluid track form one of the great power moves away from a pack in all of last year and now to Krim, America's premier 10-mile road race includes a $57,000 prize purse and millions more for Special Olympics. This is Brian Sheriff and Steve Kogo battling it out neck and neck. Sheriff actually made the first move, but Kogo responds and just sprints for that tape. He was on fine form here at Krim. He won Falmouth just a week before that, so that was quite a little month for him in August. And now we go to a, a bad move. As we see Delmer Dos Santos making a move at the 14-mile mark of the Revco Marathon in Cleveland, a very decided move in the middle of a marathon competition. The pack didn't really respond, but come 25 and a half miles, it's Anatoly Karpipinov from the Soviet Union picking up the pieces from the dying Delmer Dos Santos. Don't move early in a marathon, you'll pay the price late. Mary Level Menton cruises to victory here, breaking the course record by over three minutes in her final preparation for the Houston Olympic trials later this month. 1992 is all about the road to Barcelona and athletes trying to get there in the fitness of their life. Then based on that reality, what do we expect to see on the roads in 92? Tony, this year more than ever requires a lot of careful preparation. I would predict that early season performances on the road will be conservative. That's because what's important are strong performances and good training as opposed to fast times. We might see some new faces, people we wouldn't expect to win as the big guns are preparing for Barcelona. But after the games, watch out. Athletes are super fit, the pressure's off, that's what makes for fast times. Well, we'll see how that prediction holds up as we go to Indonesia for the Bora Badur run next month on the Foot Locker Road Race of the Month, the annual shootout for the world record of 10K and the million-dollar bonus that goes along with it. Until then, for Lynn Williams, I'm Tony Revis. Thanks for joining us in Miami, and good luck on the roads. Our special thanks this month go to our host, the Miami Runners Club, and the Metro-Dade County, and marathon sponsor Caliber Non-Alcoholic Brew.